Hey y'all, welcome back to Pancakes and Pandemonium. For those of you that are new here, I am Sarah. And y'all, this is the batch cooking video that I promised y'all. And we decided that y'all deserved a video, not a social media short. So here we go. So here is three five pound rolls of ground beef that has been in my freezer that I got on sale a few weeks ago. And I'm cutting them in half because it's just easier to get them in the crock pots that way. Bear with me with the barking and occasional noise in the background. It is summer break, so <laughs> good times. I find that I can usually fit about one and a half rolls comfortably in my crock pots. Um, I want plenty of room because they're going to give off fat. I'm going to need to come back and store them, etc. So I don't want them too full. Okay. Next, we're going to season them because we don't want bland ground beef. And I like to season it at this stage, not necessarily just after the fact. But we also don't want to add like intense seasoning because we want this ground beef to be able to go with various recipes, not just one type of recipe. So I'm just using my go-to Trader Joe's onion salt, and sadly, I ran out during this video. Um, well, maybe that's not sad, because that just means I need to go back to Trader Joe's. Comment down below and tell me if you're about ready for another Trader Joe's haul. Okay, you guys, it is that easy. Um, I added some pepper for good measure because, you know, pepper. And uh, I'm putting the lids on the crock pots. And then I am going to cook them on low for eight hours. It is that easy. And then we're going to come over here and we are essentially going to do the same thing with the chicken. If you're one of my new subscribers and you haven't seen any of my grocery hauls yet, I wait and buy chicken at 99 cents a pound. I'm showing you here, and it is usually chicken thighs and drumsticks, just because that's usually what they put on sale. Uh, occasionally they will put a whole chicken on sale, and just this last week, they put chicken breasts on sale, which I was pretty excited about. I hadn't seen that yet. But usually I have an abundance of chicken thighs, which is just great for me. I feel like chicken thighs are perfect in this application because they don't dry out. Okay, so you want to put about a half a cup of water in the bottom. It just helps it cook, and these are th these have been thawed in the fridge, so they're not going to give off a ton of liquid like they would if you stuck them in frozen. And then you want to layer them in and make sure you season in between the layers so I used the rest of my Trader Joe's um, seasoning salt, and when I ran out, I just used salt and pepper, because again, we're not looking for like any intense seasonings, because when we cook our dishes later, we're gonna add seasoning to it. We just want good flavor to our chicken so that it tastes good when we are using it for easy recipes later. Now, if you want, you can add an enchilada sauce or a taco sauce or whatever to it. Uh, just make sure you label it so that you know, like, oh, I did this to it, so you know what to use it in, so you're not surprised later. And it can be hard to identify in the freezer later. So label, label, label if you use different seasonings and sauces in your batch cooking. I would say that is the biggest tip for that. Okay, now you just walk away and let them cook. Uh, with the ground beef, I like to come in every couple of hours and give it a stir. It keeps what little bit of fat, because this is like 73.18 or whatever. Um, it keeps what little bit of fat that is in the meat distributed throughout, not just settling on the bottom. So it keeps the meat moist and you get even cooking otherwise you'll get these weird hard brown spots where it cooks more than others um if that doesn't bother you like that's fine but for me it does um i have a real sensitive stomach 
and if I, you know, those little harder brown ground beef spots actually hurt my stomach. So, you know, I like to keep it mixed up and, you know, so it all stays a good consistency and stuff and freezes nicely. And the chicken, as you can see, it's just going to do its thing. Okay, I started coming down with the stomach bug this night. So Lance and the kids bagged up the meat so it's not as pretty as it normally is but you want to let it cool completely once it's done cooking then bag it get as much air out as possible uh, the costco baggies are best for this I, I kid you not the costco ziplocs are amazing and then lay them as flat as you can get them and then freeze them okay let's make some recipes using our batch cooked meat so we called this uh, beef and rice enchilada pot pie because not only did we use our batch cooking meat, but we also used um, just kind of remnants from the pantry, things that needed to be used up or things like this cheesy rice that's old El Paso rice that I got for free on an Ibotta deal. <laughs> but it was only good for one box, which typically would not feed my whole family. So we're gonna throw in our batch cooked meat, we're gonna throw in our rice, we're gonna throw in the seasoning packet. It's seriously all just throw it in the pan, y'all. All right, my camera girl slacked on some of her responsibilities here, so we don't have one part. So then you're gonna add in a 28 ounce can of enchilada sauce, red enchilada sauce and about a half of that can of water you want enough liquid to make sure that rice cooks up y'all and then you're gonna put your tortillas on top your air quotes pot pie crust um, I wanted both sides to have the enchilada sauce on so I dipped one side and then flipped it you're gonna let it cook for 35 to 40 minutes in your oven at 400 and then you're gonna take it out Top it with cheese, pop it back in till the cheese melts, and then boom, you have your casserole. Guys, this was so good. We all liked it. The only thing I would do differently next time is make sure I had like taco or enchilada toppings to go with it. We really felt like it needed like sour cream and stuff, but oh, it was delicious and so easy. All right, next up, we are gonna make a Mexican street corn and chicken casserole. Uh, we're starting with minute rice. All I had was jasmine rice. Use what you have. And then this is what the kids pulled out when I asked them to get the street corn out of the freezer. I'm pretty sure I've got Trader Joe's bags too, but it is what it is. We gotta use this stuff in the freezers and these were substitutions and orders, so might as well use them. It was kind of hard to open the packaging, but we may do. That's what knives are for. Um, I found I had to pop these in my microwave for like 15 seconds, and then uh, they came out easier and mixed easier. I also moved everything to a large mixing bowl because I wasn't confident in my abilities of keeping it all in the casserole dish. And from here, guys, it is just dump and go. We're going to add that street corn, and it's got all of its seasonings and stuff in it. And then both bowls, you can use two 10-ounce bags if you're using, you know, Costco or Trader Joe's or just street corn in a bag. It's fine. And then you're going to add your batch cooked or rotisserie chicken. This is a quart size bag and I want to say it's probably about two to two and a half pounds worth of chicken. Okay and next you are going to use your street corn dip. This is the one from Costco. If you don't have this or you don't want to use it just add a cup of mayo and a cup of sour cream. You could even add a can of like cream of chicken soup for good measure. Um, I actually wished I had used more, a little bit more of this than what I did. So, you know, note to sell for later. And then you're going to add probably about two cups of cheese and two good sized cans of green chilies. Oh, if you are substituting ingredients and not using the street corn dip, add three quarters of a cup of salsa as well. I almost forgot that part and 
that is part of its flavor. Give it a good stir and then add three cups of chicken broth and then stir it all together, make sure it's thoroughly mixed. That may seem like a lot of broth, but trust me, it's not because we used that whole smaller box of minute rice and all of that broth is going to make sure that that rice cooks up really well in the oven. Then you're gonna spray your casserole dish really well. I used avocado oil and then dump your mixture in there. After you get it all kind of smoothed out in the pan, you are gonna add a layer of cheese and then you are gonna add your corn chips. I had about a third of a bag left, so I just used them all. Uh, gave them a couple crunches in the bag and then dumped them on and spread them out. And you guys, don't skip this layer. It was crunchy and exactly what this casserole needed. And then we topped the chips with another layer of cheese because it just felt like the right thing to do. And then we're gonna pop it in a 375 oven for about 35 minutes. And there you go. Guys, it is just delicious and again, it's great by itself and it is also delicious served with sour cream, salsa, those kinds of toppings or as is. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed putting it together for you. I hope it inspires you. I hope you try these recipes and try batch cooking for yourself and I hope you come back subscribe if you haven't already because I've got lots more ahead for you guys. I love you. I can't wait to see you back here. I'll see you soon. Bye.